In this video, we're going to focus on trigonometric integrals. But now, to begin, you may want to write down some notes. Just to review some formulas that will be useful when uh, integrating trigonometric expressions. First, sine squared plus cosine squared, you need to know that equals 1. Next, 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. This is a good review of some uh, trigonometric formulas that you've been exposed to in the past. The next one you need to be familiar with is 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. Next we have the double angle formulas. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And then cosine 2x, there's three forms that you can convert this into. You can convert it to cosine squared minus sine squared. You could set it equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared or 2 cosine squared minus 1. Next up are the power reducing formulas. Sine squared can be reduced to 1 half 1 minus cosine 2x. And cosine squared you can reduce that to 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x. Now, there are some other trigonometric formulas that you may need to know, which I'll introduce later in this video uh, when it becomes relevant. But for now, uh, we can work with what we have here. Now, the first problem that we're going to work on is this one. Let's find the antiderivative of cosine to the third x. So what do you think we need to do here? What we could do is we can write cosine cube as cosine squared times cosine x. And what we want to do is we want to change cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared. Keep in mind, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Solving for cosine we can move sine squared to the other side. If we do that, we'll get that cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So we're going to replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. Now the reason why we want to put it in this form is so that we can do u substitution. If we make u equal to sine x, du is going to be cosine x dx. So that's why we had to keep at least one cosine on the outside so that we can use it to change it into du. So this part here is du, and we're going to replace sine with u. So this becomes the integral of 1 minus u squared du. The antiderivative of 1 is going to be u, the antiderivative of u squared is u to the third over 3, and then plus c. Now our last step is to replace u with sine. So our final answer is going to be sine x minus 1 over 3 sine to the third x plus c. So that's the antiderivative of cosine cubed. Now let's work on another similar problem but one that's a little bit harder. Cosine raised to the fifth of x. Go ahead and find the antiderivative of that expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out a cosine. So this is going to be cosine to the fourth times cosine x dx. Now, we want this to become eventually du like we did before. So we need to change cosine into sine. But we need to get cosine squared first. Cosine to the fourth is cosine squared squared. Now cosine squared, we can make that 1 minus sine squared. Now at this point, we can replace sine with u. 
du is going to be cosine x dx. So we're going to replace this with du. So this becomes the integral of 1 minus u squared raised to the second power. And all of this can be replaced with du. Now, before we can integrate this expression, we need to expand it. So what we have is 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. So let's FOIL. 1 times 1, and that's going to be 1. And then this is negative u squared plus another negative u squared. So that's going to be negative 2 u squared. And then negative u squared times negative u squared, that's going to be positive u to the fourth. And then times du. So now let's go ahead and find the antiderivative of this expression. So it's going to be u minus 2u to the third over 3 plus u to the fifth power over 5, using the power rule, and then plus the constant of integration. So now we can write our final answer. Let's replace u with sine. So we're going to have sine x minus 2 over 3 sine to the third power of x, and then plus 1 over 5 sine to the fifth power of x plus c. So this is the indefinite integral of cosine x raised to the fifth power. So this is our final answer. Now let's try another problem. Let's find the indefinite integral of cosine to the fifth x times sine x dx. Feel free to try this problem. So what should we do here? Notice that we have a sine by itself. So what we want to do is we want to make u equal to cosine because du is going to have the sine that we need to cancel uh, this sine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And if we solve for dx, it's going to be du divided by negative sine. So we can go ahead and replace cosine with u. So this will be u to the fifth power. And then we could replace dx with what we have here, du over negative sine x. Sine will cancel. So we're going to have the integral of negative u to the fifth du. And then using the power rule, it's going to be negative u to the sixth over six and then plus c. So now we just got to replace u with cosine. And so our final answer is going to be negative one over six cosine to the sixth power of x plus c. So this is the answer. This problem wasn't too bad. It was pretty straightforward. Now let's try a similar problem that is going to be a little bit longer than the other one. So let's find the indefinite integral of sine to the fifth power times cosine squared of x dx. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. Now the question is, should we make u equal to sine or cosine? Cosine has an even power, sine has an odd power. What we want to do is, we want to make u equal to cosine. Because what we could do is take out a sine, leave it by itself, and then the sine to the fourth, we can convert all of that into cosine. So let me show you. Sine to the fifth, we're going to write that as sine to the fourth x times sine times cosine squared. This sine, we want that to pair up with the dx because that's going to be our du. Everything else we want it to be not in terms of sine but cosine. Sine to the fourth, I'm going to write that as sine squared squared. And then we have cosine squared and I'm going to put sine next to dx. Now we know that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Based on the trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. 
And now we have everything in terms of cosine except uh, this particular trig function, sine. So now we can make u equal to cosine. du is going to be negative sine x dx. So dx is this. So everywhere we see a cosine, we're going to replace it with u. So this is going to be 1 minus u squared squared times u squared times sine x. And then let's replace dx with du over negative sine x. So these will cancel. And what we need to do next is we need to FOIL. So this is what we have at this point. And let's not forget the negative sign that we have here. So I'm going to put that in the front. Now, we've already foiled 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. Based on a previous problem, we know it's going to be 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. Our next step is to distribute u squared. So u squared times 1, that's going to be u squared. But let's go ahead and distribute this negative sign as well. So it's going to be negative u squared. And then u squared times negative 2u squared times the negative sign. That's going to be positive 2u to the fourth. And then u squared times u to the fourth with the negative in front. That's going to be negative u to the sixth. So now let's go ahead and find the antiderivative of each of these terms. So it's going to be negative u to the third over 3 plus 2 u to the fifth over 5 minus u to the seventh over 7 plus c. So now let's go ahead and replace u with cosine. So it's going to be negative 1 over 3 cosine to the third power plus 2 over 5 cosine to the fifth power minus 1 over 7 cosine to the seventh power plus c. So this right here is going to be our final answer. So that is the antiderivative of sine to the fifth x times cosine squared x. Here's another similar problem. Let's find the indefinite integral of sine to the fifth power of x times cosine cube x. Try that one. Now we got to decide if we want to make u equal to sine or cosine. Because we can isolate a sine from the integral. We can split that into sine to the fourth times sine, or we could split this into cosine squared times cosine. I think it's easier if we split cosine cubed into cosine squared times cosine and then convert the cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared, leaving that last cosine to be with dx. Let's do it that way, because to change this to sine to the fourth times sine, and then to convert sine to the fourth into sine squared times sine squared, that's going to be more work. If we focus on this one, if we split it apart, and since it's easier to deal with 3 than 5, we don't have to FOIL. So it's easier if we break up cosine cube into cosine squared and cosine. Now all we need to do is change cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared. So now we have everything in terms of sine except one cosine function. So now let's go ahead and make u equal to sine x. And du will simply be cosine x dx. So this is going to be u to the fifth. And then times 1 minus u squared. And then cosine x dx, we could simply replace that with du. Now let's distribute the u to the fifth 
to 1 minus u squared. So it's going to be u to the 5 minus u to the 7. And then du. The antiderivative of u to the 5 is going to be u to the 6 over 6. And then for u to the 7th, that becomes u to the 8 over 8 plus c. Now, let's replace u with sine x. So the final answer is going to be 1 over 6 sine to the 6th power of x minus 1 over 8 sine to the 8 x plus c. So this is the indefinite integral of the original problem. Now the next problem that we need to work on is finding the indefinite integral of sine squared x. Now this problem is definitely different from what we've been doing before. So what do you recommend that we should do here? Because it's not really advantageous to convert this into 1 minus cosine squared. In this case, we need to use the power reducing formulas. If you recall, earlier at the beginning of the video, we wrote that sine squared is 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2x. So what we could do is move the 1 half to the front. and focus on what we have here. The antiderivative of one is going to be, let's put this in parentheses, x. Now the antiderivative of cosine two x, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, but for negative cosine, it's gonna be negative sine, two x, but we need to divide it by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x is 2, so we've got to divide this by 2. So that's the antiderivative of negative cosine 2x. It's negative sine 2x divided by 2. Now, all we need to do at this point is distribute the 1 half. We could leave our answer like this if we want to, but let's go ahead and distribute the 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half x minus 1 fourth sine 2x plus c. So this is the antiderivative of sine squared using a double angle. Now keep in mind, we can always replace sine 2x with 2 sine x cosine x using the double angle formula. But let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. Let's find the antiderivative of, instead of cosine squared, let's make this cosine squared of 3x. So go ahead and try that. So first, we need to talk about the power reducing formula of cosine squared. Cosine squared x is 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x. So notice the angle. It went from x to 2x. It doubled. What we have here is cosine squared 3x. So using the power reducing formula, the angle is going to double. It's going to go from 3x to 6x. So this is going to be 1 half times 1 plus cosine 6x. So we're going to have 1 half integral 1 plus cosine 6x and then dx. So now we can find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 1 is going to be x and the antiderivative of cosine 6x, that's going to be sine 6x divided by the derivative of 6x, which is 6. And of course, plus c. So now the last thing that we need to do is distribute the 1 half. So we're going to have 1 half x plus 1 over 12 sine 6x plus c. This right here is the final answer. Now for the next problem, we're going to try finding the indefinite integral of sine to the fourth x dx. So go ahead and try that problem. So this is the integral of sine squared x and 
that is going to be squared as well. Sine squared raised to the second power is the same as sine to the fourth. And now we could use the power reducing formula on sine squared. So it's going to be a half times one and then not plus but minus cosine 2x and then all raised to the second power. Now we're going to distribute the exponent. So if we distribute to one half, it's going to be one half squared. So that becomes one fourth. And then we're going to have one minus cosine 2x raised to the second power, which means we need to foil that. Now we can move the one fourth to the front. So we have one over four integral one minus cosine 2x times one minus cosine 2x dx. So first we have one times one, which is one. And then this is going to be negative cosine 2x plus another negative cosine 2x. So that's negative 2 cosine 2x. And then negative cosine 2x times negative cosine 2x. That's positive cosine squared of 2x. Now, before we integrate this expression, let's use the power reducing formula on cosine squared 2x. So we know cosine squared of 1x is 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x. So therefore, cosine squared of 2x is going to be 1 half 1 plus cosine 4x. So the key here is to realize that when you're using the power reducing formula, the angle doubles. So if it doubles from 1x to 2x, then if we start from 2x, it's going to double to 4x. So this becomes 1 fourth integral 1 minus 2 cosine 2x and then plus 1 half. Well, let's distribute to half. So this is 1 half times 1 or just 1 half. And then this is going to be plus 1 half cosine 4x. Now what we could do is combine like terms. 1 plus 1 half. 1 is 2 over 2, so plus 1 over 2, that becomes 3 over 2. So we can just put 3 over 2 here. And now let's find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of negative 2 cosine 2x, that's going to be negative 2. The antiderivative of cosine is negative sine. I mean, not negative sine, but positive sine. 2x divided by 2. The antiderivative of 3 over 2 is just 3 over 2 times x. And for cosine to the 4x is going to be sine to the 4x over 4. And then, of course, plus c. Now let's organize our answer. So I'm going to keep the 1 fourth in the front. I'm going to write this one first. So plus or just 3 over 2x. Now these 2's will cancel. So we're just going to have minus sine 2x. And this is going to be 1 over 8 sine 4x. And then plus the constant of integration. So this is the antiderivative of sine to the fourth x. Now let's try this problem. What is the antiderivative of sine squared cosine squared? dx. Go ahead and try that. 
So for this problem, we need to use the power reducing formulas on sine squared and cosine squared. So sine squared is 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2x. Cosine squared is 1 half, but 1 plus cosine 2x. 1 half times 1 half is 1 over 4, so we can move that to the front. And then we need to FOIL. So here we have 1 times 1, so that's going to be 1. And then positive cosine 2x will cancel with negative cosine 2x. So the two middle terms cancel, and then negative cosine times positive cosine is going to give us negative cosine squared of 2x. 1 minus cosine squared, that's an identity. 1 minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared. So what we now have is 1 fourth integral sine squared 2x dx. Now, if sine squared 1x is this, sine squared 2x must be the same thing, but with a 4x here instead of a 2x. So what we now have is 1 fourth integral and then using the power reducing formula, this is going to be 1 half times 1 minus cosine, but not 2x. This is going to double to 4x. Now, 1 fourth and 1 half we can combine. So it's 1 over 8 integral 1 minus cosine 4x dx. The antiderivative of 1 is x. The antiderivative of cosine is going to be sine, but 4x divided by the derivative of 4x, which is 4. And then plus c. So this is the final answer to the problem. For the next problem, we're going to find the indefinite integral of cosine squared times tangent to the third power. So what do you think we need to do here in order to find the indefinite integral of this expression? Well, we don't know of an identity that involves cosine and tangent. So the best thing to do is to convert tangent into sine over cosine. So tangent cube is going to be sine to the third divided by cosine cube. Or we could write cosine cube as cosine squared times cosine. So that way we can easily cancel out a cosine squared. Now, if we try to make u equal to sine, du is going to be cosine dx. But the cosine is on the bottom, not on the top, so it's not going to cancel well the way it is. So we want to make u equal to sine. I mean, u equal to cosine, not sine. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up sine cubed into sine squared times sine. And we'll leave cosine on the bottom for now. Now, in the next step, we're going to change sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. Now, at this point, we can make u equal to cosine x. du is going to be negative sine x dx. And so dx is going to be du over negative sine x. So this becomes 1 minus u squared divided by u. And then we have sine x times du over negative sine. So we can cross that out. 
And then let's move the negative sign to the front. So we have negative integral. Let's break this up into two smaller fractions. So it's going to be 1 over u. And then minus u squared over u, which is negative u. So this is going to equal negative ln u. And then these two negative signs, they'll cancel. So that's going to be positive. And the antiderivative of u is going to be u squared over 2 plus c. So this is going to be negative ln and then uh, absolute value cosine x plus 1 half cosine squared x plus c. So this is the final answer to uh, the problem at hand. That's it. That's all we got to do here.